Hello guys, welcome to my channel. This is the 77th tutorial in this course and in this tutorial we are going to talk about recursion in C. Now recursion is when you have a function and in that function there is a function called to the function itself. And uh, this might seem to be a little complicated on the surface but trust me through this program we are going to understand recursion really well and I'm sure the concept will be clear to you guys by the end of the tutorial. So Let's just get started and uh, as you can see using code blocks I have saved a file I have given it the name recursion.c and on line 1 in this file I have the stdio.h header file and uh, what we are going to do in this program is we are going to compute the factorial of a number and what is a factorial? A factorial is the product of that number and all the numbers lesser than that number till the value 1 right so if suppose you are calculating the factorial of 4 you have to multiply 4 with 3 and then with 2 and then with 1. If you are calculating the factorial of 6, you have to multiply 6 with 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Right? So that's what you have to do and you just have to take integer values between the number and 1. You don't have to, you know, take, uh, f if you are calculating the factorial of 6, you don't have to multiply 6 with 5.9 and 5.8. You just have to take integer values in between. Right, so in this tutorial we are going to calculate the factorial of 5. You can calculate the factorial of any number using this program but um, you know for example I have just taken the value 5. So on line number 2 I have declared a function and uh, it's going to return an integer value and that we can make out because uh, I have the keyword int here and this tells us the return type of the function and then I have the name of the function which is fact that's short form for factorial and then within parentheses I have uh, the keyword int which means that this function is going to accept uh, one argument firstly and that argument is going to be of integer type right and then I have the semicolon at the end of the statement to terminate the statement so the function declaration is complete then on line number three I have the main function declaration and then within curly braces I have just three lines of code in the main function I have declared an integer x I've given it the value 5 because we want to calculate the factorial of 5 and then on line number 7 I have a printf statement that first displays the value x right so the first person D format specifier is to display the value of x and then it displays the value of the factorial of x that's going to be calculated inside the fact function right so I have called the fact function here in the printf statement. Now let's look at the factorial function or the fact function and see what's there in it. So firstly we have the int keyword here because uh, the function is going to return an integer value and the value that this function is going to return is going to be displayed using the printf function here, right? And since it's going to be an integer value, that's why we've used person D format specified to display the result of the factorial operation as well, right? And then uh, inside the function, we see that we have an if statement first that's going to check if the value that has been obtained is less than or equal to 1 or not right and this is so because uh, if the value entered is 1 then the factorial is 1 and if the value entered is 0 then the factorial is 0 sorry 1 again but for negative values you cannot compute factorial right so that's that's uh, one thing that this function is not currently checking and you can make a you know make the function check that too and that won't take uh, much effort right so we can check that out later maybe but for the time being we just have to see how this function calculates factorials of positive numbers so that's why we have this if statement here that checks whether the value that's been passed is less than or equal to 1 or not and if the value is 1 if the value that's been passed is 1 then the function is going to return 1 as the uh, value right otherwise it's going to get inside this else block and it's going to return the value i right that is the value that's been passed and it's going to call the function fact again with a value i minus 1 right so now let's go through this function assuming that the value 5 has been passed to it right so we pass 5 so this if statement is going to check whether 5 is less than or equal to 1 or not and of course it's not less than or equal to 1 so we're going to get inside this else block where this function is going to return the value 5 times the function factorial called this time with the argument 5 minus 1 that's 4 right so we're still on this statement we still have to calculate what this has to be replaced with and we're going to check the value of fact 4 
right? So when fact function is called with the value four, again, this if statement is going to execute, we're going to check whether four is less than equal to one or not. And of course it's not. So we're going to get inside the else block again. And this time we're going to return the value four times fact of three, right? So that value is going to be replaced is going to replace the value that we were actually looking for in the previous iteration of the uh, of the function. So eventually what we're going to get is five times four times three times two times fact one, right? So in the last call to the function fact, the value that's going to be passed as an argument is going to be one. And in that case, the if statement is going to evaluate to true, the if block would execute and the if block just has one statement, it's going to return the value one. So one would be passed and what we'll get is five times four times three times two times one. This might sound complicated, but trust me, you know, you just have to get your head around how this thing is working and uh, it's pretty simple, right? So let me run the program and show you guys the output of this. And we see that in the output window, the factorial of five is 120 and you can verify this because five times four is 20, 20 times three is 60, 60 times two is 120, and 120 times one is obviously 120. And if you want to check this with uh, some other value instead of five, if you want to take uh, six maybe. So, you know, if you know the factorial of five, which we know now is 120, to get the factorial of six, you just have to multiply 120 by six to get 720, right? So I'll save this file and I'll click on uh, build and run again. And we see in the output window, that the factorial of six is 720. So pretty simple this is, and I hope you guys had fun watching this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we are gonna check out another application of recursion maybe. So thank you so much for watching this, and uh, please subscribe to my channel in case you haven't already, and I'll see you soon.